Okay guys, we have a few pediatric MCQs for CLAB 1 exam. Naomi is a 2 year old girl and presented with fever, running nose and barking cough. She is not drooling. What is the most appropriate management for her? She has croup and needs oral dexamethasone. Croup is also known as viral laryngotracheobronchitis. It is commonly caused by parainfluenza virus, but there are some other viruses which can also cause croup. Usually it's a young child between 6 months to 6 years age. A child will have chorizal symptoms like runny nose, cough and mild fever for a day or two and then has sudden onset hoarse voice, barking cough and strider. Child is able to eat and drink. No investigations are generally necessary. Differentials include epiglottitis, which is inflammation of epiglottis that can be life-threatening. Such a patient, young child presents with drooling and has an open mouth and an extended neck. Other differential is bacterial tracheitis which again can be life-threatening and needs urgent intubation, just like epiglottitis. Inhaled foreign body is common in toddlers and will not have any other signs of systemic illness. Congenital strider can be caused by rare disorders like laryngeal web. Child with croup has inspiratory strider and barking cough. Management is generally to keep the child calm. Do not cause any distress. Do not look in the throat. Do not try to put IV line. Most cases have mild or moderate symptoms and require a single dose of oral dexamethasone or nebulized budesonide. Oral prednisolone can also be used. These steroids can also be re repeated after 12 hours if required. Croup is severe if there is significant intercostal recessions, if there is strider at rest and if there is reduced air entry and low saturations or a child who is becoming drowsy. For such a patient, nebulized adrenaline improves symptoms for a short duration and hopefully steroids could begin their action. But sometimes intubation is necessary. Okay. A six-month-old boy presents with runny nose, cough and fever for two days. His mother says that he is breathless and is feeding less. She also reports two episodes of apnea and is quite worried. The child is febrile with a temperature of 39, is tachypneic with a respiratory rate of 80 per minute and chest auscultation shows bilateral fine crepitations. What is the diagnosis here? This baby has bronchiolitis, which is a lower respiratory tract illness in young babies generally under 2 years of age. Commonest virus is respiratory syncytial virus, but there are other viruses like human metanemovirus or rhinovirus or others. Babies get increased mucus production and obstruction of bronchioles not the bronchi, these are the terminal bronchioles. A viral per nasal aspirate can be done to isolate RSV as a rapid test. Chest x-ray will show hyperinflated lungs, sometimes increased streakiness, sometimes patchy opacification, just like consolidation. Differentials include other low respiratory tract infection but also not to miss cardiac failure in a very, very young baby. Bronchiolitis usually presents in winter months. Child will have runny nose for a few days and then a dry cough and then becomes breathlessness. They commonly have reduced feeds and sometimes have wheeze. Sometimes apneas can be present 
RSV can be severe in babies who were premature or those who have congenital heart disease or those who have chronic lung disease and are oxygen dependent at home. Those babies require admission. Admission is also required for any baby who is not able to keep their oxygen satura saturation and are needing oxygen therapy. Some babies are admitted for feeding support, for example through nasogastric tube. If any baby with bronchiolitis develops respiratory failure, this is managed with either CPAP or ventilation. You should also know about Pelivizumab which is a monoclonal antibody and is also called as RSV vaccine which is used as a pre preventive injection in high risk babies. They are given monthly injection during the winter months. This baby is 6 weeks old and presents with frequent vomiting and constipation. Examination shows some dehydration. Investigation has low serum potassium level. What could be the diagnosis here? Pyloric stenosis is the correct answer. The exact cause is not known but there is hypertrophy of the pyloric muscles. Common in white race and in boys, usually the first born boy and it tends to run in families. Generally presents at 3 or 6 weeks of age with a projectile vomiting which is non-bilious. Vomiting is happening after every feed, usually within 30 to 60 minutes of feeds. The baby is then hungry again. These babies develop dehydration, can then have failure to thrive and constipation because of less feeding. Blood tests will show low potassium, low chloride as these are lost in the vomitus and high pH due to loss of acid. So they have hypochloramic, hypokalemic, metabolic alkalosis. Please note I have made a mistake here. It's alkalosis. An ultrasound will show thickened pyloric muscle or an elongated pyloric canal. On examination, you can feel an olive shaped mass after a feed just above and to the right of umbilicus. Sometimes peristalsis are visible after a feed over the stomach area. Management of pyloric stenosis initially includes stabilizing the baby, rehydrating, correcting the alkalosis keeping nil by mouth and emptying the stomach via NG tube and once their biochemistry is normal they require surgery which is Ramstead's pyloromyotomy. Okay, Sean is a 16 month old baby boy and was brought to emergency department for reduced movements of his left arm and excessive crying. He has recently been looked after by his mother's new partner while she was out shopping. Assessment also shows multiple bruises on the back and a fracture of left humerus which was put in plaster. What is the single most appropriate next step? There are concerns about child abuse and this patient needs to be urgently referred to a pediatrician and to a social worker. Child abuse means deliberate harm to a child or failure to prevent harm. Child protection means all necessary actions to safeguard children at risk from harm. There are mainly four categories. The first one is physical abuse which is non-accidental injury or an unexplained bruise especially in infants who are not moving by themselves. Suspicious bruises are on soft areas like thighs or abdomen or injury may have a pattern for example a slap mark or a belt imprint burns bite marks serious multiple injuries or fractures are all suspicious child abuse could be sexual abuse emotional abuse and neglect child protection procedures in UK involve 
all professionals who are working with children, for example, nurses, doctors, even teachers, they all have a responsibility to ensure well-being of children. They have a duty to report any suspected child abuse. Referral is usually made to social services, who then arrange a medical assessment from a pediatrician. Assessment involves detailed history and examination and appropriate investigations. Then, Statutory bodies like police, social services, pediatricians and others, they all come together to discuss an appropriate child protection plan. Right, now we move to a 7-month-old boy who presents with fever without a clear source. Urine dipstick has nitrites and leukocytes. Trimethoprim is commenced and urine culture then confirms E. coli infection. What is the most appropriate management after antibiotic course is finished? You have to discuss prophylactic antibiotics and arrange a renal tract imaging. Urinary tract infection in young children is quite common. It can be recurrent if there are structural abnormalities of kidneys, ureters or bladder. Pyelonephritis in young children can cause scar on kidney and later end stage renal disease. Symptoms in young children can be non specific, for example, vomiting, poor weight gain, or prolonged neonatal jaundice. It can be clinically difficult to differentiate whether it is an upper UTI like pyelonephritis or a lower UTI like cystitis. UTI can also cause sepsis in infants. There are diagnostic and imaging criteria based on age, sampling methods, culture results, severity of presentation and response to treatment. The NICE guidelines for management of UTI in children suggests that renal tract imaging have to be undertaken after UTI is confirmed, especially if there is pyelonephritis, recurrent UTI or atypical bacteria on culture. Investigations which are considered include renal tract ultrasound, micturating cystourethrogram with a catheter or DMSA nuclear dye injection and then x-rays. Now after a UTI, prophylactic antibiotics are considered if babies have recurrent UTI or if they are diagnosed to have vasicouretric reflux. Generally, VUR resolves over time and patients just require prophylactic antibiotics. Surgery may be required if there is bilateral reflux of grade 4 or 5 or there is reflux up to the duplex systems or there is no resolution of VUR over time with prophylactic antibiotics. 